this was meant to be my fun intro into just rolling with things until you want to change something up. So the drone's about to die. Hold on. Uh, turn it off. So I have posted eight videos on the kind of wax gloves thing that we've been doing, and I still have a good five to ten more. So the interesting thing about social media is that you're essentially creating a list of the things that you can offer for people and then they can choose whether they want to follow or what they can expect. And if they see the same thing again and again and again and again, then when you do something different, they're wondering what the hell's going on. And my brand here is all about doing something fun and entertaining that I want to do. So two videos today. So video number one is going to be the Cutthroat Razor series that I've been doing and we're going to throw this in to throw people off. No, it's to make sure that they know that there's different content going on here. So we have our hook which explains why and then I explain very briefly in this video we're going to do a and then I explain that in this video we're going to do a split shave to see which is which gives a better shave. And then we just see what the experience is like. Oh wait, then I would do the, hmm, I'm just thinking about the right, because I want to have multiple loops running at the same time. A loop is essentially something that you've opened up where someone knows there's going to be a finish to it, but you haven't closed that, you haven't given them that finish yet. So I explain there's going to be a split shave, so that's one loop that's opened up. The next is that I mix up the potion, which is shaving powder. <laughs> I had no idea what, I had to Google what this was in the store. That's another loop that's opened up because you know it's eventually going to be used. I then apply it to my leg hair, another loop that gets opened up because as soon as it's applied to the leg hair, you want to see if it actually does the job. While it's sitting on the leg hair, we start to do the cutthroat razor shave. You know what? If I make the hook about trying this versus using a cutthroat razor, then I don't need to explain this here. One thing I really like doing is having this crisis point where the main character has to decide what they do. Do they carry on? Do they do something? But actually the choice they make is something that is out of left field. So a banana. I don't know why it's given that term. But something that's way out of left field. Oh, apply lotion to face. Face. Like let's say a little bit gets left. Instead of shaving it, I pluck it. Pretty nice and easy for the first video. Now the next video obviously is going to be our bread and butter at the moment is gonna be wax gloves. I think we should try the rose ones again, but this time soak hands for 15 minutes. That was one of the suggestions that I had, like maybe I didn't soak it for long enough. What I don't want to do in this place, I don't want the video to be about what I do in those 15 minutes. Nice and wrinkly. And then we have our normal process of doing the lavender again. But what do I want to do this time? I looked up fiddly things to do with your hands. Using small tools or utensils. Someone uh, gave a suggestion of using chopsticks. That's a good idea. And I bought some, like a Nutella pot. I'll just show you upstairs. I am gonna do this before the wife and son get back from the park. Two sons. While I wait for the kettle to do its thing, I bought this thing, it's like a bag sealer. So I'm wondering if it will work on sealing up these so I can melt them again. Yeah! That is sealed back up. I was meant to soak my hands for 15 minutes, not just get them wet. Here we go. Okay, the wax is ready and melted. Hydration test, post water. Hydration test, post water soak. 18.9, honestly, that's the best starting score so far. All right, we're doing, doing rows again today because I did it wrong yesterday. I made a mistake yesterday. While the wax melts, I meant to soak my hands for 15 minutes first. Doing the rows again today. Um, my ring again. Oh, yum. You see my wrinkly fingers through it. <laughs> Gotta make sure you get the back sack and crack of your hands already. Look at those juices. Oh, I've dribbled more. All right, 10 minutes on the clock. 
I bought myself a little treat yesterday, but um, it's going to be difficult. Some Nutella sticks. <clears throat> I didn't quite think through how to get these out. Because I certainly can't grab. Mmm, <laughs> Okies. Oh yeah, these are awful. Yeah, not for little babies. Ah, I got a suggestion to try chopsticks yesterday. I'm part Asian, so this should be easy. I think the most Asian I am is that I went to the same college as the guy that owns Panda Express. Um, this is how we're going to do it. The ratio is good. And have some more. Yesterday I tried writing a bit. I wondered if I could write the same lines as if I was in detention because someone's told me off for sucking on my chopsticks. First step is to rub off all this trash handwriting. It's very good, Ruka. Or is it yours, Shay? <laughs> Shay, pick three words that I have to write ten lines of. <laughs> You've gone from Uranus to Jesus and then back to Uranus. So ten lines of it. I've got 46 seconds left. My spacing isn't very good. Seven, eight. Ah, oh, flipping timer. Why do I need to unlock it to turn off my timer? Well, I think my handwriting could use some work. It did not it did. Kick me out. All right, moment of truth. 14.6. Rose can go in the trash. So I bought this stuff called shaving powder at Walmart today, but what I didn't realize is it's meant to be a hair removal thing. So I thought let's compare how this does to shaving with a cutthroat razor. Instructions said to make a creamy mixture. I think I'm going for frozen custard over just chocolate milk. Look at that, that is gorgeous. Spilt a little bit. I think obvious move is put some on leg hair. This smiley face, quite pleased with that. All right, now we have to wait five to seven minutes, so I thought I'd shave one side. My son has used up all my shaving gel, so I'm going with oil. That's a lot. Whoops. All right, and just half. I love how good of a shave a straight razor is, a cutthroat <laughs> razor, but it is a pain, and I cut myself all the time. Should probably set a timer. Five minutes. Should we look at the damage first? Pretty gross looking neck beard. Woo! Oh, it's slippery. Ow. Face is bloody dry. I'm gonna have to do the wax gloves on my face. Feels good with the oil. Ow. I nicked myself. Yeah, I got a scar up here from one of my shaves. You know, the first time I thought about ever actually using a straight razor was watching, ow, the heck, was watching a GQ video of MGK. That should be a reason to never use it. I mean, honestly, I don't have anything against the dude. <laughs> what? Dude, it took me all that time. I am slow as hell at shaving. My razor's got blood all in the hair. That's gross. Jinkies, I'm bleeding quite badly. What did I do? I just stopped trying to use a cutthroat razor. Right, it says to wash this off with a damp cloth. The hair's all curly. Oh, it's done it. <laughs> a nice smiley face. One eye, two eyes, the smile. <laughs> okay, so it should work on my beard hair. I am nervous. I've never been good with straight lines. My mum and sister are the painters in the family. My dad and I can barely draw stick men. Ha 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 ha. My beard's so patchy as it is. So this is like the male version of Nair. Okay, I'm just gonna put this all on. Well, I did miss some hairs. Yeah, I think I look good. Do the monobrow as well, just for luck. Do with a paintbrush for detail. I don't know why I've come down so low, but this is where we're at. Looking good. Maybe a smiley face on the other leg as well. Dude, I really need to tan. Wait, what if this side is unhappy? Yeah, let's make this side unhappy. Why is there something inside me telling me this isn't a good idea? There's no reason I can't do this. Now I wait. Set the timer. You know one of the dumbest things in this whole industry? Brand deals are such a huge part 
of this industry. Like as creators, you make a lot of money from brand deals, but trying to get your own brand deals is almost impossible. Trying to connect with brands, trying to make the pitches. I've just found almost like hitting up against a, a what is it, a brick wall. <laughs> I've been trying to go about this in a way of offering them my services in terms of like some insights, like here are my thoughts. Uh, on certain topics, but the majority of them, because they're just people who are working at these companies, unless they're really passionate about what they're doing, they don't really care. Like they're gonna do their eight hours a day, get in, get out, make their money, and that's that, which is completely understandable. But then on the flip side, you have someone like me, a creator, where I'm super interested in this stuff and like getting brand deals on my bread and butter to being able to survive and to work with cool brands and to be able to do cool ideas like right because you have the budget for them so i'm not stuck in my bathroom learning how to cut for it razor shave <laughs> i can do more interesting things but it seems like there's a lock on the industry of brands use their agencies agencies then contact agencies who have their talent under them so they manage a number of talent and that's really the only way to get brands to notice you unless you're in a very specific niche. So I have a friend in the tech niche, like photo video stuff, He's got about 400k followers, makes 15k a video. Sickening. Nothing against the dude. I would say his average views are around 10k. And I, this really, I'm just using this as an example. I just can't, I can't understand how a brand is looking at his last few videos, seeing the like level of the view count on those videos and being like, okay, will pitch at this number. I just don't see how the return of interest, uh, sorry, return on investment is there, you know? And then I look at, and this doesn't, I don't mean this in a victim mentality. I look at my videos and while yes, they're not targeted as like sales type videos, they get far more eyeballs and promote a, a brand sense of having fun, doing something exciting, trying things. But we're at a point at the moment where that's not a safe bet for brands. They'd rather go with someone who's gonna promote the product and try and drive sales. When really there's this whole top of funnel, which is like where the brand awareness, like someone seeing the product or the brand or the service for the first time, that's a pretty untapped market in the creator space, like the influencer creator space. So at the moment, I think it's all about driving sales. So then when you're in my position where you are that top of funnel and you feel like you have a lot of value to provide, the views are high, the engagement's really good, you have to find a talent manager who's able to position you correctly. So like who sees and believes in the vision to be able to communicate and pitch that to the brand for this brand video idea. So it's a tough spot. And I think about if I'd stayed in the photo and video niche, yes, I wouldn't have been happy making the videos that I was. Like I enjoyed them at the time, but I grew out of them. Oh, here we go. But when I hear about what my friends in that same space, the amount of money they're making, I feel pretty sick. <laughs> my cheek first. Oh my, that's wild. I feel far less masculine, but that might be a much better shape. <laughs> Monobrow. That's mad, dude. The annoying thing is, is that I saw that it was on sale and the ticket price came up at the full price. So next time I take something back, I'll be taking that back to get the refund. Dude, I can't believe how well that worked. I forgot about my leg. <laughs> oh yeah, that's looking good. 